Hey everyone, Sir Jellybean here and we are back with Court Arms Gates of Art Ostfront and this is a tutorial on combined arms. So quite a few new players have probably bought the game whilst on sale. I want to go through basically combined arms and how to attack with a combined arms force. So a basic breakdown, what is combined arms? Obviously the combination of different types of units. So for instance, infantry, support weapon like a mortar, tank and even support weapons like the AT unit. And the idea is you use them all together to cover each other's weaknesses. So, so for instance, the weakness of the infantry, they're obviously quite squishy, they die quite easy. MGs will be very you know, effective against them. So combining them with the tank means the infantry can spot the MG, the tank can easily deal with it as the tank is immune to small arms fire. And then a tank's weakness, for instance, would be something like an anti-tank gun. Let's say anti-tank gun's hidden, the infantry can spot it by going ahead. The tank knows it's there, the infantry could potentially use smokes to flank it, engage it, making sure the tank doesn't have to rush an anti-tank gun and be destroyed. So that's the kind of idea. So some of the basics as well of combined arms is, first of all, number your squads will help a lot if you're brand new to it. You do that by shift and selecting a single, uh, one of the numbered buttons. So for instance, squad one, squad two, squad three. That'll help with the easy selection of your forces. Before you actually attack a position, you also want to check a few things. So what do you have yourself? So for instance, I have three squads of infantry, a tank, a mortar, an anti-tank squad. And then you want to decide what you're actually going to use for the attack. So two squads of infantry in this case, the mortar, the tank, and have a kind of reserve unit. So, for instance, an anti tank rifle at the back in case the enemy armor tries to flank, and a reserve infantry squad in case you take casualties, you might need those infantry to fill in. Or, if in case the enemy counter attacks, for instance, if we're attacking point E here at the front to the west, from the north, the enemy could push infantry down. And there's nothing worse than if you're attacking, if you start getting the shot from the rear, is if you have a reserve unit, you can kind of be more flexible. You also want to check the terrain between you and the objective. So, for instance, we have this hilly terrain with forest that's going to give us cover on the way in. We have this open terrain down here, which will be good for the tanks and stuff. It's also quite open though, which means lack of cover. And the enemy obviously has all these various bits of wood, fortifications, walls, and some small buildings to use for defences. So look at the terrain and look at what you're actually going to be attacking. Another thing to think about as well is not just how, like, what you're attacking across. Is there going to be minefields in the way? So for instance, we haven't seen one. Normally they'll tell you if there is. And it, is there any obstacles? So is the barbed wire? No. Is the tank traps? Anything like that? Is the trenches and stuff like that that your tank could fall into or your infantry is sure to get, you know, deal with? Next thing, we we'll just to pause it, is reconnaissance. So you don't need an individual reconnaissance unit. You can just send, you know, a random guy up, put him on return fire only. If you're attacking a position, always better to have a quick look. So for instance, they could have machine guns, they could have anti-tank, they could have mortars. Or they could just have tanks themselves. Now, obviously, we're playing Conquest. The longer you leave it, the more reinforcements they get. But you're better off taking your time and engaging stuff as a combined force than you are rushing on the objective. I'm quite an aggressive player. I tend to rush, which means I lose a lot more troops than I need to. But you're better off taking your time, because even if the enemy brings a tank or something, you can normally spot it with your infantry at the front or your reconnaissance unit, and you can you know respond accordingly. So whilst he's moving up, another thing to think about as well is staging point. So before you attack a position, as you can see, I've got everything kind of set up together. Make sure you have everything kind of close together, ready for the assault. Don't, you know, have your infantry there and then you have your tank 200 meters behind. Because that means if you start attacking and then you need your tank, it's going to take too long for your tank to come up and, for instance, deal with a machine gun. Same with things like your mortar. You want them close enough to your other units to support because even though it's a deadly unit, this could be a field gun as well, any kind of support weapon. By itself, it's quite easy for something to come up and kill the infantry. So as you're there, as we've moved forward, we have spotted a light armoured car there. So that's why you want things like reconnaissance. And this is where combined arms comes in. So the infantry spotted the armoured car. Now he'd be a threat to the infantry by themselves, but with the tank and the mortar, he's not much of a threat at all with his machine gun. So the tank cancels out the weaknesses of the infantry there. As you can see, the tanks have come forward and deal with this armoured car. The mortar's also chipping in as it does. And there we go, firing at the armoured car. Whether he hits or not is up to the AI. The RNG gods there. And there we go, that's a hit. So, this guy's just going to hold there for now. And what we'll do is we'll slowly move our infantry up. These guys are in good cover, we'll just leave them there. We'll allow the mortar to just plink away and start engaging. So that the armoured car's down. And what we'll do now is we'll move the infantry up. We're also going to move the tank up to support. And these infantry are actually in quite a good spot, but getting them a bit closer forward would be useful. So, we'll quickly just start moving them forward. And we're also going to move the mortar forward to support. And as you can see, with the combined arms attack, the infantry is providing vision for the mortar and the tank. It's also giving us enough distance. So, for instance, if there is an AT gun or an anti-tank rifle, the infantry will hit it first, meaning the tank is less vulnerable. You've also got, as well, the tank is supporting the infantry, popping away the infantry quite you know, a distance, same with the mortar. 
killing those infantry, so infantry don't actually have much to deal with, which basically means they're, they're fairly useful, they can assault quite freely, and we're not seeing any machine guns or anything, which means their light infantry has no chance against our superior supporting weapons. As we go in, we're seeing more infantry and fortifications, but that's not a problem. As we advance forward, the tank can move up, as can the mortar, and they can just completely smash the position. So th there's kind of the basics, combine arms just there. Basically, use things in conjunction, or combine them together, and it makes them far more useful. As you can see here, they've got quite a lot of troops, but the tank can easily make short work of them, and also the mortar. Once the mortar starts firing into the position, it won't last too long, and the infantry there aren't struggling much at all. As you can see, we're doing quite a lot of casualties on their troops. And the mortar's landing. I'm not hitting that much at the moment, but it will. I'm just going to bring the mortar a bit closer forward so it's got better. You know, as you can see there, mortar three kills. So, that's what I mean. If you were just attacking with infantry alone, this would be a tough battle. And the armoured car alone would have been difficult. With the tank and the mortar supporting, it's quite an easy assault. You're easily chewing through a lot of troops. Now, obviously, this can change if the enemy had AT guns or the enemy had machine guns. But if you use your combine arms correctly and you use them in conjunction with each other, then you will win the fight. Another thing to remember is well suppression, so as units fire at stuff, enemy infantry will try and take cover, so you can take advantage. So for instance, they're suppressing the target. These guys can sprint up and get quite close. We're now going to go for the actual assault. We're going to push in. Now, it is a bit risky. Some of your troops might die on the push, but, you know, that's war. You might make some losses. Now, as we get a bit closer, we'll finally hit the deck, and then we'll just do frags. Frags are obviously another thing you want to be thinking about as you do a combined arms assault. Grenades are fantastic for pushing up and pushing those enemies out of cover. Another thing as well, remember, even though the units are working together, friendly fire. So the mortar's been fantastic, it's gone through quite a lot of these rounds, but my troops are close now. So make sure that you, you know, use your weapons effectively, but also think about what is moving up. So as your infantry assault the position, you've got to be careful, make sure they don't get killed by, you know, other troops. Well, that sounds kind of like they have a mortar there now. So we'll just see some fire. So we've moved up, but fairly effective, and now we're going to start pushing up. Now they have a mortar as well firing back at us, so they're using a bit of combined arms. They're kind of, um, you know, being a bit smart. So this is where, for instance, you have to adapt to it. So the tank's now going to push forward. And we've dealt with the infantry on the point. The mortar's chipping away at us, but he's lost line of sight now, so he can't see us. But we still have the advantage. We have better combined arms than them. So what we're going to do is send the infantry forward to get line of sight. A bit risky for him. The tank did just get clipped, I think. A bit sneaky. But as the infantry does get line of sight to them... Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we'll be able to spot their mortar and kill it. The, the tank's quite capable of dealing with these infantry. And these guys are chewing through them. Now, if the tank actually wants to move up. <laughs> Sorry about this. Bad path finding. Uh, don't know why I wanted to spin around there. Bit, bit stupid, that's why. So right, right there, we've eliminated those infantry. So we're quickly... Send our guy up, once again, combine arms, use the infantry with the armour. So right there, armoured car, that's a bit risky. Now we know the mortar's just over there. Not really a threat to the tank either one of them. So but first thing, we load up the armour piercing. We find the armoured car. He's down. We also know the mortar's in that field there. It's very unlikely to be AT guns or any tanks, nothing was spotted. So right now, you just shoot away. Now as you can see, you've got this guy here. He's giving vision to the tank. And there you go, demolished. And that's it basically, you know, you you basically just use your infantry and your armour together with supporting weapons. It's not too difficult, you'll get the gist of it. Biggest thing I guess in else front is the micromanaging, you know, switching between units. And as you can see our left squad too complete in the back, they weren't really needed, they were more there for suppression. Another thing as well, obviously once you've taken the point, move your, you know, your reserve units up to support your other units. As, as you see, they were held there, they didn't seem very useful, but if the enemy had tried to push behind or engage the mort from behind, they would have sprung into action. And obviously you can regroup certain units as well, get them back in the field. And as you can see here, the enemy is just getting absolutely slaughtered, as, the, well, the tank should be up, as they're attacking a position, but with combination of the tank as well, quite easily rip through them, because they're just pushing up by themselves, infantry only. They haven't got any support. And we'll just, um, just basically a quick recap. Basically push up with the units working together. You know, look at terrain, look at what the enemy has, you know, and take your time as well. There's no rush. I guess I kind of push forward a bit quicker there, but even though there's enemy reinforcements, there was infantry, the mortar and the armoured, the little armoured car, you know, the, with the machine gun. It was no match for the combined units, the mortar, the tank and the infantry. So you're far better taking your time and dealing with more forces steadily than you are rushing into 
and getting caught off guard by something. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, you know, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you didn't, tell me why. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. And have a fantastic evening.